off with something kind of fun because it's been a bit of a heavy week you know welcome everybody thank you so much for coming uh, we appreciate you being here I'm Mary Beth I'm your service leader for today my pronouns are she and her if this is your first time we're so happy to have you um, we're glad you heard about us and we hope you come back um, at this time I'm gonna take a minute to uh, play our eight principles video it's a good time to see what we stand for, and also just take a minute of meditation, take some deep breaths. Again, I know it was a heavy week for some of us. I was entertaining a five-year-old at my house, <laughs> gulp. Um, so, you know, we all need some time to decompress, and uh, we'll do that now with our eight principles video. Okay, I got a few uh, little opening word here that um, I'm going to say while Brett lights our chalice lighting. It's by Noam Chomsky. It is important to bear in mind that political campaigns are designed by the same people who sell toothpaste and cars. Just something to think about. That's kind of a, a little window into um, today's message. Um, so yeah, our message is a bit, a bit on uh, the political side as far as how the journey goes. And so again, I wanted to start us off with a fun song um, to, you know, lighten the mood. Okay, um, now at this time, if you're willing and able to stand, we'll recite our covenant and then our, have our opening song. Love is the spirit of the church and service is law. This is our covenant, to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love, and to help one another. Thank you. And I'll, I'll invite the choir up at this time. Um, 
while we sing our, for our opening song. Um, y'all can come on up. Yeah. And um, Tom, yeah. I think now more than ever, we need to sing a song that, that unites us all, right? And the words will be up here on the screen. For those of you who are new or those that need a reminder, um, we are fully funded by ourselves, so um, not associated with um, you know an, a larger organization. So anything that you can give is greatly appreciated. Obviously, we run off of your time, your talent, and your treasure. So whatever you can give, it'd be great. Now is the time that we're going to collect our treasure, and Penny and Barbara will pass around a basket while Mike and Ray play a little 
a little ditty for us. That's a ditty if I ever heard one. So, thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, I get to introduce our speaker today, whom I'm quite fond of. Um, he's going to share a little insight on his journey of running for political office. Um, he's also a member here, part of the finance committee. He does the sound room, although Sam is on our sound room today. Thank you, Sam. He's waving. Um, so yeah, he's going to share a little bit of insight for you. So please help me welcome my husband, Brett Ramsey. Thanks, hon. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, so I had this plan for a long time. Obviously had no idea what was going to happen yesterday. Um, I did want to just uh, address that briefly, though, that um, one of the things, I mean, a lot of what I'm going to talk about today is the challenges of running for office. And uh, I didn't even include the fact that you can be shot at um, as one of those challenges. And that's a reality that a lot of candidates face. So um, obviously, I feel uh, very qualified to speak for our church and that we don't condone violence of any kind. Um, and I know that we're, all of our um, hearts and wishes are with anyone who was harmed uh, yesterday. So. Um, We'll just, I'll just start with a moment of silence for those, anyone that happened, and, and we'll hope that um, those people can get um, any care that they need, whether it's mental, physical, any, any time. So, thanks. Okay, thank you. All right. So that being said, um, what do you think about when you think about someone who is running for office, uh, candidates, elected officials? Uh, my, my guess is that it's someone like this. Um, whether, it's, you know, whether it's been on t TV or movies, I think that's where we get most of our ideas about candidates for office or elected officials. Whether it could be, you know, humorous, can be uh, very maddening. Um, it can, it can be, it can really make you. In some cases, it really makes you feel good about uh, those cases. But for the most part, uh, unfortunately, a lot of these representations are not real at all. Um, it's these are they're not, uh, it, not what not what it's actually like to run for office. Um, I was very lucky in my case that I got to grow up with this guy as my representation of what running for office is like. So my, my grandfather was governor of Tennessee um, for eight years in the late 80s and early 90s. And I grew up with, with that as my image. And still today, if, if anyone's familiar with people in Tennessee or if you live in Tennessee, you probably heard of Ned McCorder. Um, there's a lot of things named after him. and. A lot of people my whole life would come up to me and say we're so thankful for your grandfather helping with this or that helping my parents or helping you know all these different projects and so I thought being a politician was the greatest thing you could be um, I know that's like now as I've gotten to be older I realize that almost no one gets that uh, idea uh, we all think that politicians are bad 
But um, that was what led me, you know, I went on to get two degrees in political science and ran for office myself because I, I saw the good that it could do. Um, in fact, one of the things like this, uh, this is my brother and me holding the, um, when, he, when he got uh, inaugurated the second time in, I think that's 91. So you think I'm, you think I'm large now, that was me at 10 years old. So, uh, and, my, and my grandfather was 6'3", so that's how tall I was already oh at 10 years old. So, um, yeah, it's, it's uh, but it, yeah, it was just really cool to grow up with that as a, as a model. Um, so like I said, I actually uh, ran for state representative in, uh, in 2010, so 14 years ago. It doesn't feel like it's been that long ago sometimes, but um, in 2010 for the 68th district uh, in Tennessee, which is around Clarksville, Tennessee. Some of you may, may be familiar with Fort Campbell. Uh, it's kind of north of Nashville, that area. That's where I, where I was living and I was teaching political science at the time and I, and I ran for office. Um, just to kind of start with, I wanted to give kind of an overview of an outline of like what, what it's like to run for an office like that. So it's not, state representative obviously is not, it's not running for Congress. It's not a you know, US rep or Senator, but it's also not a city council member. Um, you know, so it's, it's kind of a mid-level, uh, it was a big, a big district representing about 30,000 people. So it's, it's a good size, it's a mid, you know, kind of a mid-level office, I think. So when, I, when you start doing something like this, um, the first thing you want to do is reach out to other people to, to talk about because it's not an experience oh, it's not an experience that most of us will ever go through um, so I, I was lucky like I said who my grandfather was I was lucky to have know people who had been state representatives for years so I could go to them and ask them questions about what to how to get started with that um, give me and you know the, the, obviously the first things are like are you sure you want to do this um, that's that's one of the you got to be sure you want to do it because it is uh, it is a, a big a big commitment and I was and so one of the first pieces of advice they gave me was this elevator pitch that you need to you need to come up with a 30 second idea about why are you running for office um, you need if you're if you're going to get a chance to talk to somebody for just a few seconds you need to be able to convince them just real briefly why am I running for office um, also, you'll find that there are days where you need that speech for yourself. Um, the longer you're in it, sometimes you need to remind yourself, why am I doing this? Because it, it is a real challenge. Next thing you do is make a plan. Um, you've, got to, you've got to put together uh, an outline of like, what is this, what is this gonna look like? In my case, it was uh, basically a year of my life that I dedicated to this. Uh, one of the first things I did was print off a map of the district and I put it on the wall at my house. Um, and started putting out, put together a plan of like, how am I going to try to get to all these voters? What are, what are the, what are the events that are coming up? So, um, you, have, you have to, you have to put together some kind of a, a plan of action. How is, how am I going to achieve this? What are, what's, what's going to, how's this, how's this look? Um, a big part of making that plan is raising money. So that next thing is, an unfortunate reality of, of campaigning is that it takes a lot of money. In my case, they were telling me, the advisors were saying, you probably need to shoot for $100,000 just for, for a state representative race, $100,000. And that was 14 years ago. I'm sure it's a lot more now. Um, we, were, we were able to get over half that. So that was, I felt pretty good about, I think like $60,000, $70,000 raised, um, which again, at the time you're like, you, you wish you were raising money for like cancer research, um, but you're raising money to like, to try to make a difference, you know, it's it's just part of part of it. Um, the next thing is like trying to figure out how to greet voters. One of the people that I went to for advice was, you know, I was running against an incumbent, but he had beaten the previous incumbent about six like six years before that. So I went to the previous incumbent because he had been that rep he'd represented that area for a decade, and I was like, you know, what what kind of advice can you give me? And he, in terms of greeting voters. He said, he said, I wish I could give you better advice that, that it used to be that you could serve, you could have a cookout with hamburgers and hot dogs and you'd have two or 300 people show up. He said, now I don't, I, you could serve filet mignon and I don't think you'd have anybody show up. Um, it's just, he just said, it's just gotten that much more difficult 
to get people to come out um, to, to meet you or, or be interested in, in the process. So that was a real challenge. And then nextly is you got to stick to your plan. There, there, you can't believe how many people will come up to you, consultants, um, people trying to sell you, they want you to buy bumper stickers from them or signs from them. All, this, all these different ways of wasting your money. Um, so you've got to make sure that you have your plan, how you're going to spend your money, whether it's, you know, like in my case, we did a lot of direct mail advertisements because TV ads are super expensive. Um, so you, you try to figure out how am I going to spend my money and don't, don't, get, um, don't get, you know, sidetracked by these people that come along and, and want, to, want to try to take your money. And then lastly, just, you just got to work. Um, there was, it's, it's a, in a, in a mid-level race like that, there's no polling data. There's nothing like, you have no idea where you stand. Every day you just get up and, and you hope that you're competitive. You hope that at the end of the day, you're gonna be, you're gonna be close and hopefully win it. So uh, an average day during a campaign, first thing I did every morning is check the weather. Um, because you need to know if it's, if it's gonna be a rainy day or not, because that's gonna impact the rest of your day. Uh, then I'm going to return emails and phone calls from the day before. Um, there was one of those things that was funny. A lot of times people would write, would email me or things like, can I speak to Representative Ramsey? And they didn't like, did, or the person, they didn't realize that I'm doing all this. Like there's no, I don't have a staff of people. It's, it was all me. I'm my own campaign manager. There's no, like nothing else. Um, next thing you're going to be doing, you got to make, most days you're making phone calls to, to either raise money or maybe talk to, to potential voters, but you've got to spend time every day. As, to me personally, that was the worst part of my day was having to make phone calls for, for, um, for money. Um, the next part though, if it was nice weather, that was the best part of my day was getting to go out and, and greet voters, knocking on doors, because I think sales is tough for a lot of us, but when you're, when you're running for office like that, you're selling yourself. And that's the easiest, that was, for me, that was the easiest thing to ever sell because I believed in myself and I knew that I could help these people. So that part, um, and, and we ended up, we ended up knocking on over 7,000 people's doors that, that year um, trying, to, trying to get to people. And if it's not nice weather, um, you have to spend, try to spend that time. You're gonna make some more phone calls. Um, also, I would write, I wrote these, um, you know, these, you're probably familiar with these palm cards. They're a little bit bigger than an index card. And that's what a candidate, uh, they have their, they'll have some pictures on there and they'll have some little messages about their campaign. And that's what you normally get handed out to if, if they come to your house or at, a, at an event of some kind. So I had those. And when I would go to people's houses, if they were there, I'd give them one. If they weren't there, I would kind of hang it on their doorknob. And I had, I, I personally wrote, sorry, I missed you on a post-it note. Um, I probably wrote thousands of those um, and I would do that during a rainy day and just write those out and stick them on. So I had two in, in my back pockets. I'd have one if they were there to give them and one if they weren't there to give them. So I was ready for, for both. Um, and then lastly, uh, the, the thank you notes. Um, I thought it was, again, with raising money, I would write a thank you note to anyone who donated to my campaign. So I spent time doing that. Stories, someone who used to work for a newspaper told me that newspapers are always looking for other things. And if you write a story and submit it to them, they might just include it. And that happened um, several, so, so I would write stories about our campaign events and stuff. Like I would say like, you know, Ramsey knocks on his 3000th door and I would include a picture of who was with me and that kind of thing. And they would just include it in the paper. So that's like free advertising. But you know, you gotta, you gotta do that stuff. Um, plan your events, whether you're gonna be out somewhere you want to make sure let people know um, if there's any kind of uh, parades or festivals all that kind of stuff in your district you need to be aware of it because you've got to be there so um, and as Mary Beth pointed out when I was practicing for this she wanted to remind you that like remember that this is all on top of your like average life so like you, you have your, your current life you think about how busy you are already as a person and then you add all this onto it so like work and everything else, this is, you don't get to like quit doing your day, day stuff. You, this is all on top of that. So this is, it's just a, like, just makes it a lot more challenging. 
So for actual election day, there were um, a couple of days leading up to that. You make sure you get all your you get all your volunteers lined up. You got diff several different polling locations. In my case, I think there were maybe like 15 or 20 different polling locations that people could vote at on on actual election day. So you got to have people lined up at all those different because to be you know all the people waving signs. Um, and even the signs, you know, where they, where they put up signs in the ground at polling locations, you have to do that the day before, because if you don't, they'll take them down. So you have to plan all that stuff out. And then on the day of election, check the weather, because um, if, it's, if, if it's rainy, it's going to be a long day. Um, start getting to, start planning your, your, uh, your plan for the day of like getting to places, there's certain polls that maybe voters are more likely to come to in the morning. So on their way into work, and you want to get out there and greet people that, that way. Um, then as the day goes on, you got to make sure you're getting, talking to your, keeping track with your volunteers, um, get them, make sure they've got lunch, make sure that all these, all these different things are covered um, and that you're, that you're getting around all the different places because it's, it's just a real hectic day. Because uh, you think about all the stuff you've done for a year, all comes down to this day, this one day. Um, so it's a it's a real uh, real big deal, and then as the day winds down, you're still trying to greet some voters. Those last minute kind of things, and then they your your party, whether it's Republican or Democrat, is likely to have a, a election return party. And in my case, I wish I had thought about this a little more. I went, and then when you find out you lose, you're just kind of there and you're sad, and other people, you know, it's like. It's just kind of like, what do I do now? Um, a, uh, another candidate who was running for re-election, um, I, I, I wish I had talked to him, I wish he'd give me the heads up beforehand, because um, he stayed home until he knew that he'd won, and then he shows up at the party. So that was the way to, that was the way to do that. Um, but in any case, yeah, you're just kind of there, and, um, and then you, you, at the end of the day, you might make, either make a concession call or um, to, if you've got the person, I didn't have the guy's phone number, honestly. I remember like, I, did, I, thought, that, I thought that later, like, was I supposed to call him? Because you hear about those calls. Um, but I did have a couple of um, media outlets call me um, just to get some, to be like, you're sad, you just lost. And then somebody calls you and is like, how do you feel about losing? <laughs> Great, that was fantastic, I'm really excited. <clears throat> so that's, that's uh, but yeah, it, it's, like I said, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's like a year of your life that you give up, um, in some cases more, depending on what kind of level of race you're running for. But I just wanted, ever since I ran 14 years ago, I felt like I see all those pictures on TV, like I said, of, of candidates running, and, and I feel like we don't really understand what that's like. Um, so I wanted to kind of share that experience with you all. Um, then I want to move on to kind of talk about in the broader spectrum what what it is to um, how we how we look at candidates in general and how that affects our government so this first slide this next is is about our expectations for elected officials and I, I kind of looked this up this is the the majority of people in a, in a public opinion polls this is what we seem to look for in candidates so we you generally expect them to share your political views um, we want them to live in a community similar to us put larger interests above smaller ones what that means is like if you're thinking of a member for congress we generally say that we want someone to think about the country as a whole as opposed to just our state or if it's a state official it means looking at the state as a whole as opposed to just our city so that's what we generally say that we want. Again, these are all things that we say we want. If you're a more religiously minded person, you want someone who shares those, those religious beliefs. Um, people from lower economic backgrounds want someone to come from a similar background. Um, the the middle, and, middle and wealthier people don't seem to, doesn't matter as much to them. Probably because most people come from those backgrounds. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter as much. And then that lastly, um, I think, Whatever it is that you think uh, a statesman is, I think a lot of us say, like, we just want a statesman, you know, not a politician. Um, and, I, I, and that can mean a lot of different things, I guess. But that's, 
uh, generally what people seem to seem to want. So, and then how that plays out in practice is very is somewhat similar, but also different. Um, like I said, we said we initially we wanted to share our political views. Believe it or not, um, politicians do a good job of doing what we say we want. Um, I remember in, in graduate school reading that and being very surprised, just as I am still today, um, because I think that we generally think they're not doing what we want. But when we, we, they look at the, the general mood of, of public and they try to do those things, then, but then the, the weirdest thing happens is that like they do things that we, we say we want, then we don't like them for it. So like we, it's just, like we, it's, it's almost like we can't be pleased. We, we ask you to do this, you do it, and then we don't like you anyway. So I, I, I don't, I've never fully understood that, but that seems to be what happens. Um, the next thing was, we said that we want people to live in communities similar to us. Well, the, uh, the stat is that working, the working class people, which is manual labor, or clerical, or service jobs, makes up less than 1.5% of all people in state legislatures. And when I originally I looked at that and about six or eight years ago, so a little bit before the pandemic, it was about 3% of state legislatures. So it's actually been cut in, it was already bad. And it's now it's like cut in half since the pandemic. Um, that's how few people around the country are even in office. If, if you looked at Congress, it would be almost nobody. I don't, I'm not sure, there might be one or two people in Congress that are from working class um, jobs. It just, it's a, it's a, it's very difficult for those people to, to get um, the time off or the resources necessary to, to mount a serious campaign. It, it just, it just is overwhelming. Um, the next thing that we said we want is to put larger interests above smaller ones. Well, again, we're, um, we're working against ourselves because we, it, it might be nice in theory to think that, but in actuality, if you're if you're running for office, you you've got to you've got to bring home the bacon. You've got to the pe people run people that are electing you. They're going to say, "Where's my community center? Where's my bridge? Where's where's the money being spent here?" I don't care. Like you're like, "Yeah, I did. We passed this project. It's good for the whole country. I don't care. What did you do for us?" Um, that's that seems to be you don't you don't ever you don't ever get elected or reelected if you're not doing things for your district. So it's it's just kind of an when we, you know, common complaint that a lot of you probably have is these, these huge omnibus bills where they say they add on all these different um, riders and all these different things to the bill. But the reality of those is that they can't, uh, all these different, different legislators can't vote for something unless they're getting something in return. Like they, they're, because they know that you, need, you want that and you're not gonna elect them if they don't do that. So we're, we're part of the problem. Uh, believe it or not, it's not, it's easy to point the finger at them, but it's us that's, that's causing that. Uh, the next thing was that religiously minded people want somebody similar um, who shares their beliefs. Well, the current statistics are that as much as we, we you hear this like Christian nation, United States, only about 25% of people now are, are attend church regularly. And politicians will, will tell you that they attend church regularly. The reality is, is they don't. Um, they, a lot of them are only attending church. If there's cameras there, if there's media there, um, you know, if, there, if it's something you know, election related. It's, it's the, most of them just, they either don't, and they may not have the time to, but, but it's, it's very much, they give the appearance that they're there, but it's not usually the case that very many of them are there. But again, even our population is not going to church as much as, as they used to. So it can't hardly blame them for, for being any different. Um, the next thing was that we, we said, especially poor people want you to come from a similar economic background. And like I kind of alluded to before, very few elected officials come from poor backgrounds. You don't have, you don't have access to, you don't have access to the money that it takes to run for office. You also don't have the connections. So a lot of people that are born into wealthier families, they have wealthier family friends. So when you're running for office, because you can't, you, you, you can spend some money on your, on your own campaign, but you also, it's a lot easier if you've got hundreds of friends that also have lots of money. Where if you're poorer and you're getting donations, $20 donations from, from thousands of people, it doesn't add up the same that, that 
thousands of dollar donations come up from, from people. So it's, it's just a lot easier for those people to, to run. And then lastly, yeah, I said we want people, we're a statesman, not a politician. But again, like I said, it's, it's very difficult um, to be a statesman because we don't, um, we don't create the scenario for you to be a statesman. If you, if you have to do all these, we can't see the bigger picture ourselves, then how can we expect them to? So if they have to do things for us on an individual basis, then we can't, we can't they, they don't have the time to do things on a larger basis. Um, this next one, this next slide is about just how much we, we think of people in office. So this, this is, um, yes, the, the majority of people, the vast majority of people can name the president. A lot of people can name the vice president. But when you get down past that, it's, it gets pretty bad. Um, only, about, only about a third of people can name a member of Congress. Um, good luck trying to get somebody to name. I, I think most people in this room are, are the exception. So we maybe forget that sometimes. But the average person can't name city council members. Um, or their, or their mayor even. So, excuse me, those are people, and, and I always, as a political science professor, I always tell people, if you're voting for president, that's not the important person to vote for. It's your city council and mayor that directly affects your life all the time. And those are the people that you need to pay attention to and vote for. So the fact that we can't name those people is really uh, upsetting. So, because that's, that's causing the problem. Um, the majority of people think that candidates are running to enrich themselves. That was like the main reason when they asked people, why do you think people are running? What vast majority of people said to enrich themselves. 85% um, think they don't even care what we, what we think. Like that really stood out to me that like, really 85% of people don't even think that, and we vote for these people, a lot of them every two years, and we don't even think they care what we think. Why are we voting for them? It's, it's really weird. Um, approval ratings, always terrible. I think the congressional approval rating stays at about 10%. Um, and believe it or not, even for your individual member, again, the people that we vote for every two years, a lot of them are less than 50. So we're, we, we really like these people and we don't like them. Like, why, why are we doing this? So, who's ready? <laughs> I'm gonna show of hands, who's ready to sign up to run for office today? All these good things that are going on. Anyone? Any takers? No? Maybe I thought, I thought we'd get some takers. She, she was for sure that we'd get some. So, yeah, it, it's, it's, a very, it's a very frustrating and very bleak situation, I feel like. Um, and, and my big point of what I wanted to talk about was that to get you to understand that we, we blame the politicians a lot, but this is where it starts. If, if we're not doing more, then they can't do more. So some suggestions I had to improve. As hard as it may be at times, think and speak more positively about these people, whether it's candidates, whether it's people in office right now, because that's how you, that's how you change things. When I was talking about my grandfather earlier, I got that experience from a young age and so much positivity that I wanted to do that. And, and the, we, we need more young kids like I was. We need more kids growing up thinking, man, it's cool to like be a, be a representative or be a senator or governor or whatever, that like these are the cool things that you can accomplish, the stuff you can do for people. We, we need young people to see that, to, to try to change that narrative, try to change that, um, that line of, of, of process. Um, also with that, spend a little more time researching candidates. I, in, my, in my research for this today, I read about um, a man that was a retired physicist from the Air Force who couldn't even, couldn't, like, couldn't get elected, had like very little chance of being elected. This is a Air Force retired physicist that's struggling to get himself elected. He should just walk into the job. I mean, like, th this is someone who's obviously very qualified and has the background that you'd think a candidate most people would love. Um, so it's, we, we, there are people out there that are very good, qualified people that are running for office and they can't get any traction because it takes so much money and effort. So if we'd spend a little more time looking for these people, 
then, then they, we might get more elected, might get more of these people elected. Give them, um, and the, the next thing is, when you find those people, volunteer for them. When, when I ran for office, I quickly discovered that a good volunteer is worth their weight in gold. Um, you, you can't imagine how, how helpful it is when you're running for office to have somebody that you can count on to go out there and knock on doors with you every day, or someone who's even making phone calls, you say like, yeah, I made 10 phone calls today for you. That's awesome. That's like one less thing that I have to do. So anything that you can do to, to help these people get elected, is, is they're going to think is amazing. Um, lastly, put yourself out there. Um, I, know that is, I know that it is very difficult to imagine. I, I'm a firm believer that everyone should run for some type of office in their life. Now that can be, that doesn't have to be, you know, a representative or a senator. That could be secretary at our church. Um, it could be something that you're, you know, PTA, whatever it is. But like everyone, think about something at some point in your life to put yourself out there as a candidate. It will, it show, it makes you feel better. I think it makes you feel better about yourself that I'm, I've tried. I have, I've really put forth the effort. It also, um, you know, if you're, if you're able to be successful, then you can actually make a difference in people's lives. Um, and and the, the, more of us, the more of us that are doing that, the more that we'll all see how challenging that is, how much, um, how much you can make a difference, what, what you know, this, this level of um, giving back to our community that we need. And, and hopefully, if we do more of this, and we move away from all the negativity, then we'll start to see a difference in our, in our government, in our communities. So um, thank you for listening today and good luck. <laughs>
Thanks, everybody. Just some quick closing words, and then we can meet on this side here for some snacks and socializing. Um, this is from Franklin D. Roosevelt. I pledge you, pledge myself, to a new deal for the American people. Let us all here assembled constitute ourselves prophets of a new order of competence and of courage. This is more than a political campaign. It is a call to arms. Give me your help not to win votes alone, but to win in this crusade to restore America to its own people. Thank you so much. Go in peace.